Hello, today we'll be talking about five different lo-fi effects pedals. I like all of them. And we'll be getting into reasons why lo-fi is such an interesting effect. That being said, this is a comparison video. So you can decide which pedal is right for you, if any. The history of recording and effects can be seen through the lens of a constant improvement in fidelity and audio quality. But it's undeniable that the artifacts of old analog recording gear have slowly morphed from sounding annoying and unwanted to something that for many musicians and producers is actually desirable because they add texture or character. In today's episode of the series, we'll take a look at line incompatible pedals that recreate artifacts of old gear and also effects that degrade your signal via synthesis and modulation. In the first section, we'll hear lo-fi pedals inspired by vintage analog machines, creating effects like the hum and crackle of vinyl, the beloved wow and flutter of tape, or the reduced frequency bandwidth of radio frequency. In the second section, we'll tackle digital gear inspired lo-fi, offering effects like bit and sample reduction and glitching. The last section will be about other creative tone decimating effects based on sound synthesis like ring modulation, filtering, and frequency modulation. Just in terms of having a clean setup though, all of the pedals today will be sitting on the Pedal Train Metro 24. So this is one of their smaller pedal boards. And for the sake of convenience, each of these pedals is being powered through the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power Three, which in my opinion, especially for larger setups, is just the most convenient and cleanest way to go. If you are interested in any of the gear mentioned in this video, there's affiliate links for all of it in the description. If you decide on purchasing, please do use those links. It really helps uh, support this channel, support what I do. And if you are in North America, consider using Sweetwater to purchase your gear. Basically anything that you need, they're gonna have it. We'll be breaking these lo-fi pedals down into three categories, starting with the first one. Category one being classic lo-fi effects, emulating the artifacts of old analog devices, from tape to vinyl to radio. A perfect example of this, and definitely the deepest example of this, is Chase Bliss Audio's Generation Loss Mark II, which has all of the qualities that a functioning analog device would give you, and also all the qualities that a failing analog device would give you. So things like saturation, let's play this riff coming from the base station. I'm gonna turn this pedal on, saturate. Maybe add a little bit of noise here. Heavy noise. There's also flutter and wow, so let's turn this up. As well as failure. So this is like as if the analog device is just completely failing on us. It's like a broken analog device. And you can hear it almost as if like the tape is sort of skipping on us, it's doing that sort of thing. This model knob changes the sound substantially. So what I'm sifting through here are different types of tape emulations. So things like a Walkman, cassette, dictaphone, camcorder. So you're just getting all these different analog textures. Oh. Kind of like this one. Take the saturation down a bit. Turn it off. This is where we started. <laughs> it's just completely different texture. So at this point, whatever tape machine is being emulated is a complete piece of shit. Now there's some other examples of this lo-fi analog device emulation in this collection. And it's right here in front of us, Source Audio's Artifact Lo-Fi Elements. The first one we'll look at is radio. So let's play this new riff and I'm gonna turn this on. That's sort of the effect that we get. So modulation depth, if I turn that up, I could change the rate of that modulation as well. So this sort of gives us like a tapey quality, not quite, so it's almost like a warbly quality. Destruct, this adds like a sort of noise. There's a filter as well. And then if I change the bandwidth, with low bandwidth, this really sounds like a crappy radio. And then, of course, there's a mix knob here. So if I take it off completely, and if I slowly sort of mix that in, it almost sounds like it's a chorus effect until I get to 100% mix right here. 
There's also tape mode, and depending on like the combination, the mix of each of these knobs, it gives you all these different sorts of effects. So I'm basically just gonna run through a bunch of these and see what we can get here. So right away, this sounds maybe a bit like a chorus or a flange-ish. That's definitely some sort of saturation. Let's play with this bandwidth here. Some sort of slappy delay. Oh. That's a longer delay. Turn the mix up. Bring it back down. Okay, interesting. So playing with the modulation along with this delay if I bring down the rate or bring up the, the rate of this uh, modulation, that's affecting the delay that's happening here, right? So there's just so many different options that we can go with here. That's with no mix. Let's bring the mix back up again. This is all within tape mode. And if I spin this over to vinyl mode, let's see what this gives us. So I'm gonna turn all this back down. Destruction seems to be some sort of vinyl noise. Now we're sounding more like a broken vinyl from the mix up. So that's the flavor that we're adding to this riff, the initial uh, riff. Ooh, stepping into some phasery territory. So this is, this sounds almost more like a guitar pedal. I mean, it is a guitar pedal, but it, it does work well on synths. Let's, Bring that release up and see how it reacts to longer notes. Okay, we've got some warble action going on here, right? So we're basically recycling similar effects that are happening here, but it's just a different flavor. I would say that this is leaning a bit more into guitar-y world, in, in my opinion. This is, I think, better for synths. Both of them together? <laughs> Failure, let's turn the saturation up here. Oh my god. Flutter. Next is vintage video game inspired effects emulating the artifacts of old digital recordings. In this example, we're gonna be playing with bit crushers as well as sample rate reducers. The first one we're gonna look at is the Autobit Junior because it takes this whole bit crushing concept, sample rate reduction into a whole new realm because it also features this sort of rhythmic aspect or stuttering along with sample rate reduction and bit crushing. I'm gonna play my riff here, sample rate, let's reduce it. just completely decimate that sound. Right, I like there's usually a sweet spot, maybe something around there. So let's hear the bit crusher on the Autobit Junior. Let's pull this sample right back up and just hear the bit crusher. So there seems to be very little effect up until around here. Let's open up this. Yeah, still very little effect up here. The effect seems to be happening more in the lower end. So both of these, Bit Crusher and Sample Rate Reduction, they just absolutely degrade the sound of your incoming audio signal. And there's plenty of effects pedals where that's what they do. There's also a preset on Artifact where that's what it does as well. You can hit play, turn this off, turn this on. And clearly that's a Bit Crusher. And we'll see throughout the video that Artifact is really, I would say the most diverse pedal in this uh, comparison. It kind of touches on all of the different lo-fi degradation uh, effects. Going back to the Autobit Junior though, as I mentioned, you could get rhythmic with it, with the stutter functions. Let's play the same riff, turn this off, turn this back on, turn the stutter function on. I'm gonna take that sample rate reduction down a little bit. Right, so, we could choose the subdivision that we want to stutter. So that's a, sl uh, a smaller subdivision. But if we want random, let's see what this gives us. So this is sort of randomizing that stutter subdivision. Let's make this a bit more rhythmic. I'm gonna take this release down. 
We could also play with sequencer and sequencer multiplier. So right now, I guess this would be called the default setting. There's also a pitch sequencer as well as a filter sequencer. So let's try default, just turning this on. And now let's try pitch, or sorry, there it is. We'll bring up this release now. Oh my God. So it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a, some pitch sequencing going on there. If we go to filter sequencer, there's clearly a filter happening there. Let's reduce the sample rate again. The sequencer coincides with the tempo as well. So if I change this tap tempo, right, so that opens up the sequencer a little bit. We have some changes happening there. Autobit Junior works great on melodic riffs. Because it has this sort of rhythmic aspect to it though, I personally think that it really shines on drums and also the sample rate reduction and bit crusher work especially well with sharper transients like drums. Here we have our drums. Just with the stutter alone, we're getting some stuttering going on here. I personally like random all the time. Ooh. Yes. Maybe a bit of bit crushing. Maybe just a tad and then sample rate reduction. You could almost use the stutter as like a fill function. So every so often. Tasty. Another pedal in this category is Bitmap, so let's take a look at that. This one's different from Autobit Junior. It sort of fills in the gaps of Autobit Junior in a way. Autobit Junior doesn't give you as much control over uh, modulation. It's more focused on like rhythmic aspects on top of sample rate reduction and bit crusher. The first difference with Bitmap is that this is an effect that you can mix in, whereas Autobit, it's just on or off. Let's hear this riff. I'm gonna turn this on, there's no difference. Mix is at 100%. There's our sample rate reduction. And then we have our bit crusher. Right, so depending on where these are, they sort of react to each other differently. There's some little crushed sweet spots, I guess you could call them. There's also a drive here, so let's... Let's full drive. Bring that back down a little bit. As well as a filter. And then you have your modulation control. So let's turn this depth up. The envelope destination is set to frequency. So the depth is up full. This is like a really intense modulation we have going. We could change the rate of that. And then of course we could change the wave. a little bit more jagged. We could also alter the envelope here as well if we really want to crush it all the way down here or we could bring it more right so this is like the lower range of the sample rate reducer. There's another pedal we haven't explored yet, Bitters by Caitlin Bread, which fits into two categories. Those two categories being vintage video game inspired effects, emulating the artifacts of old digital recordings. It also has presets that fit into the third category, which is what we're gonna look at now. The third category being ring modulation, which is a kind of modulation that pretty much destroys your signal. Bitters does work really well with synths, I find, but in my opinion, it definitely does feel more like a guitar-y type of pedal Actually, both of these sound a bit more guitar in my opinion, as I mentioned earlier. And they both sort of have that aesthetic as well. First off, let's check out Bitter's Bit Crushing preset. So right now the mix is at zero. So, whoa. 
So completely different from any other Bit Crusher here. Right, so this is something that I definitely would sound better on guitar. It's got that sort of guitar -y, distorted sound. It actually makes the synth sound a bit more like a guitar, if that's something you're interested in. We're going to switch this over to ring modulation. We're going to hit play. We've got something. Let's turn the mix fully up. Oh, we lost it. Okay, let's turn up bitters, and this is where the ring modulation comes in. So we have this sort of robotic sound mixed into the background, or full-on roboto. If you've experimented with gear or listened to electronic music, this is probably a sound that you're familiar with. It's, you've heard it somewhere before. If you play around with the dual parameter, it sounds like you're kind of mixing through the two different types of waves that the ring modulator is creating, right? So you're getting a different quality bit of distortion on that, maybe? I would say that in terms of sounds produced, this is definitely the wonkiest pedal of the bunch, but the quality is still there. If that's a sound that you're looking for, then it's an option. Going back to Artifact though, there's also a glitch element to this pedal on this preset right here. Definitely the most diverse pedal on this list. It covers every single category. The glitch preset here is kind of similar to the Autobit Junior's glitchiness, but a lot less rhythmic. Basically with this preset, it's always listening and basically recording. So if I hit stop on my riff, it's like a granular sort of thing going on. It's caught a little part of the riff and now it's chopping it up in different ways. So if I change the modulation rate, depth and shape, this alone will change that little granular thing that it, that it recorded. So I'm changing the depth. Let's change the rate a bunch too. Make it something a lot faster. Whoa. Slow that rate down. <laughs> if I play around with this switch. Distortion, oh my god. I've actually done a fully dedicated video to granular delay pedals, so if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper into that whole side of things, some different examples from what we just heard, here's a video, it's also in the description. And then there's ladder, which is the third one from the right, so one, two, three. Ladder is essentially a bunch of filters in one. So there's the static filter, the LFO filter, as well as the envelope filter. On top of this though, you could add distortion, change the filter resonance, and cycle through different wave shapes. With all this, you could sort of take the lo-fi thing to a whole nother level. Turn it on, mix on, full. Here we go. <laughs> Just that alone is super cool. Can I destruct this a little bit? Yeah. Turn the mix down to zero. So that's adding a lot. That's really cool. So with this preset, it's really just about finding the sweet spot. Depending on the sound that's going into it, the audio that's coming in, these are the sort of qualities that you're going to find with ladder. And if you're using a hardware synth with its own filter, analog filter, then you have a fourth filter to work with. Very cool. And that concludes this feature and comparison video. All of the lo-fi pedals in my collection. That's a lot of information. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for being here and hopefully see you soon.